Howdy, I'm Sadie Mae with The Awesome Orange and today we're gonna to be making some awesome chairs. A big thank you to Pony Jorgensen for sponsoring this video. I built a lot of furniture with Naughty Alder. So for these chairs, I dug through my scrap pile for pieces to make up the seat backs and bottoms. The bottoms are gonna be 16 by 16 and the seat backs are gonna be eight by 16. With that all planned out, I went to milling them up base plane on the jointer, edge plane on the jointer, then thickness plane to one and a half inches at the planer. Now it's time for glue up. I'm using my favorite Pony Jorgensen clamps. They're Cabinet Master Parallel Clamps. These are awesome because they create a nice level work surface and apply equal clamping pressure from both sides, which helps prevent bowing or cupping. Oh, and maybe my favorite thing, you can stand them up and out of the way. which makes cleaning glue squeeze out easy on both sides of the panels. Once I got all the panels glued up, it was time to focus on milling up the pieces of the base. After a quick look over of my plans, I picked the best pieces of alder that I had on hand and took them over to my miter saw to cut to rough length. Cutting them into smaller pieces will make milling them easier and faster. If you'd like to make yourself some counter height chairs, I do have complete build plans available on my website. They include cut lists, material lists, and step-by-step -step instructions. With them cut, it was back to the jointer, and then the planer. And then lastly, to the table saw. The base is made up of all one and a half by one and a half pieces. 12 pieces each or 24 for the two chairs. If you don't have the tools to mill your own wood, you can get away with using store-bought two by twos for the base. Once those were ripped, I ran them through the planer one last time to clean everything up and make sure all four sides were the same. Now let's unclamp our panels and start cutting everything down to their final dimensions. Which means we're back over to the miter saw to start cutting those base pieces. I'm making two chairs, so I had four pieces at 35 inches, four at 22 and a half inch long pieces, six at 11 and a half inches long, and eight at 13 and three quarters inches plus two I cut later at 14 and a half inches. Now let's trim the seat backs. I'm first ripping them to eight inches wide. Then I cleaned up two edges of the seat bottoms using my cross cut sled on the table saw. Then I set up a step block on my cross cut sled and trim the seat bottom to 16 by 16. Then next I use the sled to clean up one edge of the seat backs and then trim them down to that same 16 inches wide. We're almost ready for assembly, but first I wanna put an angle on the back leg so that the seat backs are in a more comfortable position. To do this, I'm laying out approximately the angle I want. It's roughly seven inches long, and since the seat back's eight inches wide, this will give a one inch overhang, making the total height of the chairs 36 inches high. To cut the tapers, I bought this really cheap tapering jig and quickly found out I don't like it. It doesn't have any clamps or hold downs for your workpiece, so I ended up using tape. And after a practice cut, I found that a seven degree taper with my fence at a roughly five and seven eighths works for what I wanted. And even though this worked, I don't like the jig. So I ended up ordering a different one for next time. I'll leave a link in the description box below for the one that I bought. Okay, now we're ready for assembly. Well, that is, once I cut some slots into the apron pieces. I'm doing this now because after assembly, my biscuit joiner won't fit. 
and I need the slots in them to attach the seats, the seat bottoms to the base using tabletop fasteners. I'm making a reference line on the back of the legs of the front legs so I know exactly where to attach the cross supports. I'm going to start assembly by creating two sides and then putting those together. And to hold everything in place while I connect them, I'm going to be using Pony Jorgensen's aluminum bar clamps. I like these for assembly because they're lightweight and easy to move around quickly. And for joinery, we're going to be doing some countersunk holes and then attaching everything with wood glue and wood screws. I'm using two and a half inch number 10 wood screws and the countersink bit that I'm using creates a 3 8 inch hole that we will be filling later in the build. to side two. This video you can really see that I like to use a clamp, pre-drill or countersink the holes, I'll remove it, add wood glue, reclamp it, and then screw it together. Having the clamp there just make sure everything doesn't move around and stays in the exact place that you want it. And now with the two sides we're going to be joining them with the top cross support first, the same way, countersinking the screws, wood glue, screwing it together. And now we're going to put putting in that back piece. This piece will not only work as a cross support for stability, but will also be a design element because we're not putting it just basic how we installed the other ones. We're putting it on the top here. So I clamped it into place with some easy hold clamps that you can close with one hand, pre-drilled it. Now we're adding some wood glue and then we'll secure that with some screws into place. clean up any glue squeeze out, I like to use a straw and just kind of bend it a little bit and it goes right into the corner and gets the glue out for you. Now to attach the front foot rest. I have this one elevated four inches up, which I'm just using a spacer block here to hold it in place while I pre-drill glue and then secure that in place. This just ensures that I'm getting the proper height on both sides. All right, with assembly complete, it's now time to make this thing look awesome. And to do that, we're gonna be filling in all those countersunk holes with a 3 8 inch dowel. Just add wood glue, stick them in there, let them dry. And once they've dried, then I'm gonna be sawing them off with a pull saw, and then we'll sand them flush. If you wanna note where you're joining the two pieces where the screws are gonna cross, just make sure that you offset those so your screws don't run into each other during assembly. Once that's all sanded, it's time to attach the seat backs. And to do that, I'm using another favorite clamp of mine, the Pony Jorgensen Easy Hold Clamps. These again, can I can hold the workpiece and then close them and it holds it right into place. I've got a, about a three quarters of an inch offset on all three sides and then I am pre-drilling the holes for this just like the rest of assembly. Here you'll see that I needed some shorter screws on the top, so I did go back later and add shorter screws on the top to attach those and build it like the rest of the chairs. And for finish, I finished these with some Rubio Monaco and cotton white. And then the last step was hardware. We're gonna add some feet levelers and attach the seat bottoms to the base using those tabletop fasteners with the slots we created earlier. With all that, we have some awesome new counter height chairs. Or maybe they're called stools. I don't know, but they're awesome. What do you think? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the description box below. Oh, and be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss my next awesome build. And remember, build loud, 
build wild and have an awesome day.